What's going on guys? Welcome back to Wildcat Cave. I think it goes without saying that what Mark Stoops has done in Kentucky is nothing short of spectacular. He drug a bottom feeder SEC program to a place where they're regularly ranked in the top 25, going to and winning bowl games, and being competitive in the SEC East. The job he's done in Kentucky is remarkable and he's been compensated well for it. He is tied for the ninth highest paid coach in the country without producing ninth best teams or truly being held to a top 10 standard. However, with some comments he's made in the past few months alongside back-to-back -back disappointing seasons, it's time to put up or shut up, quite literally, for Mark Stoops. Before we get any further, if you're not already subscribed to the channel, go do that right now. The first football game is less than a month away and we'll be keeping up with it all here on the channel. So subscribe and click the notification bell so you don't miss out on it. Also click the thumbs up for me if you like the video. I want to preface all of this by saying that I'm not calling for Stoops job or want him fired. What I am saying is that there's a segment of this fan base that will excuse any and all of his actions or failures due to the fact that Kentucky football has been historically bad and now we're not and I fundamentally disagree with that stance. Personally, I have three major complaints about Mark Stoops. First is what I believe to be his biggest and most fatal flaw, and that is his constant need to publicly complain. In my opinion, his complaint falls into two main categories. Number one is NIL, and number two, expectations, and I'll expand a little bit on each. First with NIL, this is obviously a new era in college sports, and with NIL and the transfer portal, but this is not a uniquely Kentucky issue. This is a problem that every program in the country faces, but not everyone wants to cry about it like Stoops does. This started last season after the embarrassing ass whooping Georgia gave us when a Kentucky fan called into his weekly coaches show and noted the Stoops history against teams above 500 in the SEC, which is terrible by the way, but we'll talk about that in a minute. Stoops response to the fan was to pony up and pay more money so we can compete with other SEC teams. That comment, rightfully so, made national headlines and put a bad taste in the mouths of a lot of Kentucky fans. Since that comment, there have been other small remarks here and there, but at SEC Media Days a couple weeks ago, which should be a time to build excitement for the upcoming season, Stoops took the time to complain once again about Kentucky's NIL. He was saying how he receives no help and he's unable to coach how he would like to because he's always trying to raise money. And while I believe this was meant to be a public shot to the university, fans largely didn't like the comment. A lot of fans contribute any way they can to the program, and this seemed like just another slap in the face by Stoops. He's paid $9 million a year, and more than most every other coach in the country, and they all face the same issue. Sorry if you don't get sympathy for doing your job from us, the fans. His entire quote's pretty long, but he also talks about how he doesn't know how much longer he can do this, which again is a topic we'll get to in just a minute. Now to defend Stoops for just a second, both he and the former basketball coach have very publicly and very explicitly stated how Mitch Barnhart, the athletic department, and the university is behind and unwilling to help with NIL efforts, which is certainly something that needs to be addressed, but we'll save that for a later video. But I just want to acknowledge that a portion of the blame should also fall on UK, not solely on Mark Stoops for that, but nonetheless complaining is a little weak about it nonstop. Mark Stoops' other chief complaint usually come when standards or expectations are mentioned to him. It seems like if anyone wants to get under Stoops' skin, all you have to do is mention a shortcoming of his. And instead of handling it professionally or acknowledging it, he'll likely tell you how hard it is here or how bad of a program it was when he got here. Like that somehow erases losses to Vanderbilt at home or blowing leads due to poor clock management. Stoops should be commended on what he's accomplished here. However, he's fallen victim to his own success. With greater success comes greater expectations, and you have to be willing to take those expectations head first if you want to continue to grow. But when challenged on that, Stoops tends to rest on his laurels and get defensive to anyone who wants more. Stoops has gained a ton of favor from the fans and a lot of leeway to be honest. There does seem to be a little bit of undeserved arrogance surrounding his comments. And let's be clear, amid the success, Kentucky has not really achieved anything of substance outside of two Citrus Bowl wins in 12 years. We've even seen that arrogance translate on the field to the players. I won't go into too much here. If you want, it, if you want my real thoughts on that, go watch some of my other videos over the past two seasons. I talk about it quite a bit, and I believe that that attitude starts at the top with Stoops. 
but it really just feels like he doesn't want to be held to the standard that he himself has set here. In talking about expectations, that brings me to my second point, which is performance. I've said it a thousand times now. Stoops has done great things here, blah, blah, blah. You get it. But it hasn't been perfect, and there's still plenty of reasons to critique him on his on-field performance. His biggest downfall that shows poor coaching, in my opinion, is his clock management. And I'm sure there's some advanced statistic out there that you can find that shows how bad he is at that. I don't have it here, so you'll have to take my word or go back and watch the games for yourself. But as far as things we do have statistics for, here are some numbers of the ninth highest paid coach in the country. In his time at Kentucky, Mark Stoops is 5-8 after a bye week. And remember, that gives him two weeks to prepare for the opponent. He's 1-11 against the SEC West on the road, and he got his only win last season in what was an awful game at Mississippi State that he somehow escaped with the win. And he's 2-6 at home against the SEC in the past two seasons. And in my opinion, his most damning stat, that in his career, he only has two wins against any SEC team that finished the season above 500 in the conference. For a program that consistently talks about taking the next step, Maybe we should quit talking and focus on beating the easy teams. And my final issue with Stoops is that for the better part of two years, it seems he's had one foot out the door and is just buying time until another job opens or until he decides to retire. Every year there's rumors of the Iowa coach Kirk Ferentz getting fired or retiring and it's assumed by most people, at least nationally, that Stoops would be the top guy for the job and he hasn't done a great job of shutting down that narrative. Then, of course, you have his comments earlier in the summer saying he doesn't know how much longer he can do this on his own, maybe hinting or threatening of leaving or retiring. Keep in mind that his dad died young while being a coach, and his brother retired at 56, and Stoops is already 57. He likely doesn't want to coach much longer, but seemingly having one foot out the door is typically a bad look for a head coach. But it all came to a head last November when he nearly took the job at Texas A&M before having the rug pulled out from under him. Honestly, I think the whole story got a little overshadowed by the basketball season that was going on, but it was a massive story. Some people around Kentucky will tell you that Stoops never accepted the job, and to some extent that may be true. But I think that that may be because some of the staff he thought would go with him told him they wasn't leaving. And But more importantly, Texas A&M may, may have never fully offered him that job. I think that Stoops was the guy who their AD wanted, but once it was floated to the board and eventually leaked to the fans, Aggie fans revolted at the idea, which ultimately led to them retracting Stoops' offer and hiring Mike Elko. To me, it makes too much sense not to believe that Stoops wanted to leave. After a disappointing season, some fan pushback against him, and a school with unlimited NIL money, which we now know is apparently the most important thing to him, along with all the rumors at the time, there was just too much smoke not to have a fire. And again, media and people around UK tried to spin it as if it was just another school gauging interest, but Stoops declined, and that's the end of it. But I believe it was much more than that. And had A&M fans not lost their minds, Mark Stoops would be in College Station right now, in my opinion. I understand that the bulk of this video has been fairly negative. However, I do want to clarify that I think Mark Stoops is the best coach this program has ever had, and I'm glad to have him as a coach. He's done a ton of good here and has made Kentucky a better program for the next guy to inherit one day. I still have my season tickets, and I'll love every minute of it, and I'll cheer just as hard as I can each and every game. I really am splitting hairs with some of these criticisms, but I think they need to be acknowledged as legitimate concerns and not let our history of failure be the reason to not want to take the next step forward. I understand this is Kentucky football. This isn't Georgia or Alabama or Ohio State. But if we aren't holding ourselves to higher standards at each new step, then we need to make a change. Mark Stoops spent the large majority of his time at Kentucky preaching that the job's not done, and why not us? But here recently, it seems that he spends his time reflecting on what he's accomplished and complaining. I don't want to see all the good he's done here be overshadowed by silly complaints. I think a lot of fans' opinion of Stoops could be decided this upcoming season, mine included. And with the SEC getting better, in Kentucky having maybe its most difficult schedule ever, Stoops and the team can't afford very many missteps. There's a fine line between 5-7 and seven and 9-3 and three this year, and it's a razor-thin edge that could be a major difference in how the fans perceive Stoops. All of that said, I know he has a tough job, but if I could offer Mark Stoops, who makes $9 million a year, one piece of advice that a Hall of Fame coach once said, 
It would be, there's no crying on the yacht. That is going to wrap up this week's video, guys. Thank you all for watching. If you stuck around this far, give the video a like and let me know in the comments what do you think of Stoops, his comments, and how important is this upcoming season for you. Subscribe to the channel. I'll see you guys next week. Go Cats.